New details tonight. An upstate mother of five serving a 15-year prison sentence will stay behind bars after her request for parole was denied. Tiffany Carroll was sentenced in 2019 for killing her boyfriend in Greenwood, but since then, her loved ones and lawmakers have been pushing for her release, saying she was a victim of abuse. One of the board members who voted no cited a letter he said was from a police chief, but when we asked the Greenwood police chief if he wrote anything, he said no. Fox Carolina Zach Prolutsky was at that hearing and shows us what this means for Carol, who will have to wait at least another year for a chance at freedom. The hearing to decide Tiffany Carroll's fate lasted less than 30 minutes. The deliberation, less than three. Never seen somebody that I personally believe was more entitled to be granted parole under the circumstances than Tiffany Carroll. So I'm, I'm just shocked that they denied her parole again. In a small boardroom in Columbia, the fate of Tiffany Carroll's freedom decided in a tight vote, but ultimately denied. I put the blame at the feet of this parole board today because they had all the information in front of them. Three people spoke during the hearing. Carol, her attorney Travis Moore, and State Representative John McCravey, who has been an advocate for her release. McCravey also submitted a packet containing letters from her loved ones and even the prosecutor on the case, who strongly supported letting her out on parole. Number one, she has no history of violence. Number two, there were special circumstances in the case. Um, and number three, she was a victim of battered women's syndrome that can cause women to snap. No one spoke in opposition during the hearing. After the testimony, the board asked Carol a few questions, including her plans if she were to be paroled and if she could assure them something like this would never happen again. If I don't give me a chance to go home, I can promise you I will never come back in here. I want to have the opportunity to help change other people's lives as well. Like, this has been a lesson that I've learned the hard way, but if you guys give me a chance to go home, you won't ever have to worry about hearing from me again. Members of the board each receive a packet in advance of parole hearings with statements and different facts of the case. Three voted in favor of parole, but it wasn't enough. Violence in, involved in the crime. Yes, sir. I agree with you. That's, um, that's an issue for me. Frank D. Weidman from Greenwood was one of the two votes against parole. Another reason he gave was a letter he said was from a police chief. He said in that letter, the chief was against parole. But when we asked the current Greenwood police chief about it, he said he never wrote anything, and he's not sure why another chief would speak on a case that isn't theirs. For certain violent crimes in South Carolina, like the one Carol is in prison for, a two-thirds majority is needed to grant parole something that didn't happen during her hearing. Our justice system's not perfect. I think it's the best one in the world, but it's not perfect. And um, based off my feelings right now, my emotions coming out of this hearing, I definitely think there are areas that can be improved. Carol's family members tell me they are extremely disappointed in the outcome, and Carol's defense attorney has already filed a motion asking the board to reconsider their vote. We'll keep you updated on if that happens. For now, reporting, Zach Perlutsky, Fox Carolina News.